Hello. This is Sergius Bober from the European Center for Minority Issues in Flensburg, Germany. First of all, I would like to say that we are very grateful for being involved in this very invited and being involved in this very important activity concerning territorial sovereignty context and the preparation of the code of good practices. Thanks for this opportunity. Mm. In my presentation, as suggested by the organizers, I would like to focus um, on three um, questions. Um, first of those questions concerns uh, the very issue of sovereignty. Uh, to what degree this concept remain a relevant one in the in the contemporary world? Um, this is linked to, to 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 another question focusing on the reasons why sovereignty conflicts still take place in the contemporary world. Um, from there, I will progress to 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 the issue of sovereignty and globalization. So to what extent uh, pro-sovereignty, pro-independence, these are interconnected concepts, pro-sovereignty movements are an anti-globalization for, or rather a pro-globalization uh, globalization forces. Um, and the final question, uh, reflecting the ECMI's identity, we are dealing mostly with the, with the minority issues, um, will be focused upon minority rights in the context of territorial uh, conflicts of, uh, of sovereignty. This is, what, this, is, this is not something that the organizers uh, asked for directly, but I think that it's important to, 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 to reflect in those brief considerations our center's identity, our point of, point of strength. Um, so returning to the to the to the first question, whether sovereignty is still a relevant concept in the contemporary world, and why territorial conflicts of sovereignty still take place, um, I think that what is important here is, of course, to first think very briefly about the the, the very notion of of sovereignty, what the word sovereignty, the concept, the notion of sovereignty means, um, and perhaps. Of course, we could have a very long theoretical discussion here, perhaps a separate, even separate conference discussing this. But I guess that uh, for the sake of this presentation, what is really important is perhaps to, to, to be aware of the two most important issues concerning sovereignty. This is the internal dimension and the external dimension. In the internal case, of course, the main question would be who's sovereign? Uh, what actor um, is responsible for taking ultimate decisions in a, in a given polity. This, of course, is important in the context of territorial sovereignty context because this is, this is the bone of contention here. Who's ultimately deciding in a, in a given polity? If we take the example of Scotland, this is the, 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 the example I'm mostly referring to in my, in my presentation. Of course, that sovereign would be Scottish people. At the moment, it is more complex, of course, in Britain, we have the doctrine, doctrine of the sovereignty of parliament and so on. So it is not, of course, the Scottish people who take all the ultimate decision in this, in this polity. The other aspect of sovereignty is, of course, the external dimension, which concerns the, the, the relationships with the outside world of a given state, um, a given, a given polity. And here, of course, on a clearly clearly theoretical level, um, we, we, we should mention that the international order, order is built upon the equality of actors, so each actor taking part, each state taking part in, in, uh, in, in, in the international, in international relations is equal, uh, at least in the formal sense. Of course, in the practical sense, there are many differences resulting from the economic potential, military might, geopolitical context, and so on, um, and so on. Uh, so these two, these two dimensions of sovereignty, of course, very simplified here, are very important for the, uh, for the, for the following considerations. Um, focusing now on the external dimension of, uh, of sovereignty, uh, the question remains, because we cannot escape the issue of globalization in the context of discussions concerning sovereignty. Of course, the question is, to what degree um, sovereignty indeed is relevant in the contemporary world, and contemporary world that is characterized by a density 
of global interconnection. So we can say that we are living in the age of, of uh, dense globalization. And the reason why this question is important in the context of territorial sovereignty disputes, conflicts, or conflicts as in the language used by the organizers of today's event, is that it provokes a question if sovereignty is relativized to a certain degree by globalization, legal framework, uh, trade deals, uh, economic interconnectedness, and so on, and so on, and so on, is there a point actually in trying to become sovereign? Maybe it is basically pointless due to the level of those of the density of the of the of that inter interconnectedness. Um, and that question, I'm returning here to the to the Scottish context on which I will be focusing mostly in this presentation. And that question was actually asked uh, very frequently during the 2000 and before uh, the, the the campaign leading to the 2014 uh, Scottish independence referendum. So whether it makes sense to be to be independent. Um, and some experts uh, tackled that question during the during the Scottish independence referendum campaign. And here I would like to refer mostly to uh, to Michael Keating and Malcolm Harvey, who in the book published around that time, titled Small Nations in the Big World, What Scotland Can Learn, actually tried to look at countries uh, more or less comparable to Scotland, uh, such as Ireland, the Baltic states, and the Nordic countries. So European context, countries are more or less similar economic uh, position. Demographically, also the differences between them are not are not very 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 big. Uh, neither of them can be considered a, a global superpower, and so on. So, so the, the the comparative aspects indeed 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 make sense. Um, in this case, and by looking at those countries and the way they adapt to 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 the challenges of globalization, um, Harvey and Keating were actually able to 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 conclude that indeed globalization is very dense at the present stage, but it still leaves enough of uh, enough of space. Uh, for individual countries to pursue their individual and very frequently differing from each other policies concerning economic, social development, international alliances, and so on and so on. Um, to cut the long argument short, one can say that uh, with regard to the three groups of countries um, mentioned before, the way they adapt to, to, to the challenges of globalization can be characterized as follows. So in the case of the Baltic states, it is something closer to, 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 do, to, to neoliberalism inspired solutions. Um, Ireland stands somewhere in the, in the middle with the combination of neoliberal policies, but also uh, in some in some instances very heavy social spending. And then the Nordic countries is the opposite end of the of the equation, uh, with still largely intact welfareist approach to 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 the socioeconomic um, issues in in those countries. Um, and this analysis uh, rather clearly uh, clearly uh, shows that there is indeed a space uh, for individual countries to 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 adapt to globalization and pursue different sets of um, uh, of policies. This, of course, is reflected in the discourse produced by the Scottish National Party, so the main force behind the pro-independence aspirations of Scotland. And there is definitely a consciousness that globalization, in spite of its density, still offers uh, enough of uh, possibilities for individual countries to to pursue their own their own goals. Therefore, I think the answer here is relatively clear. In spite of the challenges global of the challenges uh, resulting from globalization, uh, in spite of the legal frameworks, in spite of um, economic interconnectedness and so on, there is still enough of spa space to to be sovereign, to be independent, and to take a path that is most suitable for a, for a given society. Um, when it comes to, to, to the interconnections between, again, the topic is to a degree similar, uh, territorial conflicts and globalization, um, the follow-up question was whether those phenomena, so territorial conflicts of sovereignty, are pro 
globalization or in a position to, to, to globalization. And here again, I think that the Scottish case is very, very illustrative um, because uh, due to the influence uh, that the thought of late uh, Neil McCormick had on the internal debates in the Scottish National Party, and this reaches back to to the 80s uh, and 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 the first half of the of the of the 90s, um, actually globalization was very frequently internally debated um, within the within the SNP, and it was it was very much accepted. Um, and interestingly enough, accepted, but not in a negative way, rather in a positive way. It was considered, I would say, as something that can be described as a pos positive challenge. And it is also linked to the way Scottish nation nationalists perceive themselves. Um, and of course, as, as most of us, I suppose, know, the, the na nationalism presented by SNP can be, can be described as uh, civic and liberal um, approach to, 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 to the nationalist doctrine. Therefore, um, globalization opened a certain kind of possibility for, for the SNP to argue, on the one hand, for the openness towards, toward, towards the world, so not, not isolation, isolationist independence, but open independence towards global challenges. Um, it was also open, openness to, towards global solidarity. Uh, McCormick was presenting, uh, presenting his version of the independence in Europe, as it was called, um, as a very open position towards, again, global challenges, uh, towards global responsibility, and I would say greater good concerning not only Scotland, not even Europe, but, <clears throat> but really really the, 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 universal, uh, the universal stage. So in that sense, um, in that sense, definitely uh, SNP can be considered a party that can be characterized as a as an accepting globalization and fairly positively positioned towards it. Um, so again, this is not an isolationist uh, isolationist uh, nationalism. This is something that requires openness towards the world. And significant, significant, significant contribution to the, to 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 the to the global issues. Um, the final question I would like to to address in this uh, in this short uh, presentation concern uh, concerns minority rights. Um, I think it is very important to mention them in the context in the context of uh, territorial sovereignty uh, conflicts. Um, very frequently, they are mentioned in such a context. Uh, but mostly um, in two ways. First, it's the, the, the minority-majority paradox. So cases like the Catalan case or Scottish case are very illustrative when it comes to this paradox, which involves uh, a certain group of citizens, a nation like a Catalan nation, Scottish nations, that has a certain vision of socioeconomic development or its political future. But at the same time, it cannot be achieved because of the limitations imposed by a wider polity. So on the national level, this vision cannot be, uh, cannot be, cannot be realized. Um, the other issue is the inadequacy of the existing framework concerning minority rights in Europe when it comes to the conflicts such as the or disputes such as the ones involving Catalans or or Scots. So frameworks such as Framework Convention for the Protection of National Minorities cannot solve this kind of conflict because uh, here we have. Uh, Basically, a large nations uh, living compactly on a on a <clears throat> on a large territories with a significant degree of autonomy, its own media sphere, and so on and so on. So, frameworks which are more tailored for smaller minorities, autochthonous minorities, cannot really respond to 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 this kind of challenges. But at the same time, I think what is important is to connect. Uh, is to connect minority rights to the issues concerning sovereignty. And in that sense, what I, what I mean by this is to actually pose a question. To what degree pro-independence, pro-sovereignty -so, pro actors think about minority rights and diversity management in the context of potentially independent states? So here, perhaps, I would not be mentioning any solutions that are ready-made, but rather, but rather call for conceptual work concerning minority minority rights framework. So every actor that aims to achieve sovereignty, that aims to achieve independence, 
should be at least to a certain degree focused on the future of diversity management in the potentially independent state. How to respond to the linguistic needs of minority uh, minority groups, to their educational needs, to their culture, cultural needs, how to accommodate them within the wider polity, and so on and so on. So I think this <clears throat> this event creates an opportunity to 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 also mention this kind of issue and to call for a conceptual effort concerning concerning that. So to wrap up this uh, this presentation that already runs a bit over time, I would I would say that. Sovereignty is definitely still a very relevant con uh, concept in the contemporary world. The possibilities offered by it make, uh, make goals concerning the achievement of sover sovereignty very attractive. Therefore, sovereignty, uh, territorial conflicts of sovereignty are not going to, to, to disappear, disappear soon. I would also say that globalization is perceived as a positive challenge. At the same time, this does not necessarily mean that pro-independence, pro-sovereignty actors are very willing to build international coalitions in order to achieve that goal together. This is in detail explained to uh, in, in my text. And the final point concerns minority rights. So I think that every discussion concerning territorial con uh, conflicts of sovereignty should also have this component. So focus on minority rights and not necessarily by concluding that um, nations striving to become independent are oppressed minorities. This to a certain degree can be, can be, can be a fact, but rather to invite those nations, their political representatives, uh, civic, <clears throat> civil society and so on to actually think how the issues concerning diversity management, minority issues, should look in the independent countries that they want to try to achieve. Thank you very much for your attention.